design of this apartment. Here, my apartment, and I can individually shape it. And then the thing you want to understand, what happens is that we finalize the editor. And when we talk about it, when we place an implant, there are things going beyond the surgical phase, such as the abutments we'll be using on top of these implants. So which one to choose, how to choose? I will just try to give you some very simple examples that may help you in your practice as of the next day. Basically, after the implants are done, we have two ways to continue. We can either go conventional or digital. And in both ways, we can either custom design our abutments or we can copy something that will be looking more natural. Today, I'll talk about these four instances in three different patients. First patient is with the conventional way by copying the root. So this patient I treated years ago with extruding the tooth with hardly broken part in the central again breaks it once more time, but this time it's unable, impossible to save the tooth. So the, the prognosis is extraction, and then we'll be making, placing an implant. In this case, what happened is that the tooth, the crown, when he came to the office was too loose that I need to go in, make the root canals, place a post, and create the core, and then place a provisional on top of that until the time of surgery. So when the patient comes back, we start the surgery, meticulously extracting the teeth. I'm not going to talk into these details. There were in some excellent lectures since, the, since yesterday. And once the teeth, tooth is extracted, we'll be using the surgical guy, and I'll come back to that in the next case, and position it in the mouth and you can't go wrong after you place your surgical guide. So through that, we're placing the implant into the patient's mouth, just going, following the drills we need to use. And finally, now it's time for us to place the implant. But before that, what I did was, in the meantime, is I took this provisional out, I made the impression of this prep teeth, and then, after the tooth has been extracted, I simply dipped it into the silicone impression that we took right a few minutes before the surgery. And then with that, actually what I'm creating is that I'm carrying the whole tooth, not only the crown, but with the root into the impression. So in this case, what happens is that now I'll make a second extraction, but now instead of the mouth from the model out, that gives me the exact shape, original shape of the existing root. So the practical way to transfer it is making a Duralay transfer. And with that, what I want to do is as soon as I position, place and screw my impression coping, I will simply engage this over this Duralay that will give me the exact position of my implant and simply unscrew my impression coping. And when I have this in my hand, I will simply bring it back and position into the model. So basically what we created here, we duplicated exactly the same condition into our model. And in this case, we created an emergence profile of this abutment, which is exactly mimicking our natural root surface. So while I'm doing these chair side, Eric is working on placing the augmentation materials, the connective tissue right into the socket to thicken up the, the soft tissue. And then what happens is that we finalize the additive connective tissues and simply bring this type of an abutment over the tooth, just leaving it for healing. And once this is done, 
during the time we kept the patient with a Maryland bridge and this is one week this is like one month after and this is five months after the surprising thing is like when the patient came here everything was perfect I didn't need to make another impression and indeed I already prepared the original abutment and the crown so what we are doing here is that we're taking out the temporary abutment and simply positioning the permanent abutment and a plastic crown, provisional crown on top of this. So this is in 20 minutes when the patient came to unscrew the provisional abutment. The reason why I'm still on this is that he's still on ortho and it doesn't allow me to do the best anterior guidance and it will be done maybe in a few, few months. So coming back to the main topics, in a case where I can go digitally, I can still go custom design or copy the route. How do I work on that? This is a patient that I treated back in 1997 and we treated the patient with veneers. So simple enough, we followed all the steps that I've been talking since years. Unfortunately, that was a crown, a very heavily cemented post. We just prepped through that, which was okay. And this is him this year, but this was just before he broke this central. But this time it was broke badly. And what happened here is that besides the thing we're missing here, there's a huge crack in that part, which means the tooth needed to be extracted. So this is what we do. This time, Junaid, my dearest friend, who's been working with us for together 30 years, he is doing the implants here, extracting it slowly. Always lately, we started using the guide, which is the best thing we ever had and then positioning the guide, placing the drills through the guide, placing the implant and covering up. So once we've been through these steps, what we will be doing basically is that Junaid will take a connective tissue graft and position it. But what he is doing here as a small difference is that he is de-epitalizing the, the tissue over here, front and back, leaving the epitalized portion in here so that it will be like a socket preservation which will be resistant to anything that may happen here in the, in the mouth. So after that, we wait for healing and then it's my time going to be involved in this case. In 16 months, we have amazing tissue healing here, tons of soft tissue. And simple enough, we kept the patient with a sort of Maryland bridge during this healing process. And at the end, this is what we got. So uncovering the implant was so simple for Junaid, just a simple screw, uh, cut. And what I did is I simply positioned my tie base. We digitally scanned this. And if you want, of course, Instead of this, which fits perfectly in the position, we can go with, with the conventional way and just do regular silicone impressioning. So it's, it's your call. I just tried to explain what we did digitally. And in this time, what happens is that here, I'm going to go digital. And what I'm gonna choose here, I'll follow two ways in this patient. First one is the custom design, and that can be like really chair side. You just make the digital impression of the extracted soft tissue, tie base, and the bite, and the rest what you have to do, I'm not going to go into these technical steps, but you do your abutment yourself, design the emergence profile. So when we do that, things are so easy. If you want to check it quickly, you can just mill it out of Telio, for example, in 15 minutes, and then you try it. That was very quick, and we did it just for testing it, which is okay, not the ideal, 
The worst case scenario, what you can do is you can manually reshape it and then bring it to the form that you love the best. But instead, what we chose was a way which was more accurate. In doing so, what we did is we copied the root. How did we do this? We copied it through the combi. So we have the, we merge the combi crown and implant digital impressions. We stripped out everything except for the teeth and we can see the tooth itself, the root itself and the implant itself in its relation to where the, the emergence profile should be. So from here on, my job is so easy because now I have positioned everything in 3D in the correct position. And all I have to do is to try to melt everything into that form. The suggested contour of the machine is like this. But what we have to do is to adapt it to where it should be. And this is the exact copy of the root of the tooth that I'll be using. So with that, immediately in a few hours, I would say, I can easily have all this design done. The tooth is beautifully carved. And another sp thing is that I can easily see it from the inside, its emergence all the way to the top of the soft tissue. So with all these combinations, I can bring it up to this stage very fast. And here, what do we have? At this stage, I will be simply checking the bite. Do I need heavy contacts? Do I need light contacts? What about the anterior guidance? And these machines do have digital articulators. And then once I agree with the shape, I split it into two. Splitting means one part of the, the design will be my abutment and I can individually shape it. And then the remaining part outside will be my crown. So this can be done within a few hours. So the same session when the patient walks in, I can have these Emacs CAT abutments done, CAT CAM. On top of that, again, the Emacs LTA1 crowns build. And now I can just merge all these things together. Simply, I'll be using the multi-link implant to cement my abutment into the tie base. And once I have this, just play with the surface texture a bit to position it into the patient's mouth. And simple enough, this is what I get the minute I position it. Now, you may say, what a failure. Let's wait and see what happens. This is just before we glaze the surface of that porcelain. Yes, I can see the gap here. I can see another gap in here. All we wanted to do is to make these two centrals symmetrical and take care of the lateral later on.